Welcome to Faces and Places. I'm your host, Mike Romai. Today we venture inside of Moraine State Park, where according to local legend, strange things occur here at the Snyder Cemetery. We'll talk about white flashes, green glowing, and red eyes. And if you see any of that behind me, please let me know. In fact, this cemetery is the final resting place of 14 members of the Snyder family. We're filming here with the permission of the State Park Service. And since the cemetery has been vandalized numerous times, we decided not to divulge the exact location of the site out of respect for the dead. It should be noted that in researching the Snyder family history, which dates back to around 1800 when Conrad Snyder Sr. first arrived in Butler County, that there is no mention of a fire that took the lives of any of the family members at this site. But then again, facts never did get in the way of telling a good ghost story. We're going to be joined in our search tonight, in our exploration, if you will, by the Spirited Ghost Hunting Group of Western Pennsylvania and Eastern Ohio. This group has made numerous visits to this cemetery. It's Rochelle, Wendy, Kara, and Jim join me tonight. Rochelle, tell us a little bit about the Snyder Cemetery. Um, we heard it through the internet about two, three years ago that it was haunted. So we made a trip down here after several failed attempts trying to find it. And it was an amazing place. As soon as it starts to get dark, things start happening. You start feeling that there's a presence here. You want to, sometimes you just want to get out. I mean, you can't stick around. It's just that feeling. We've seen things, we've felt things, we've heard things. I don't know if you want more detail than that. Well, I don't know, because so far what we felt, and we have felt the uh, mosquitoes oh, yeah. in the area. Uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's quite a human night here, but uh, you know, there are noises going on all around us. I think they are noises of nature, and of course the mosquitoes, it seems, is, are buzzing around. But what you guys have experienced is quite different than that. Oh, yeah, definitely. We've actually felt touches that weren't mosquitoes, that weren't bugs. You actually feel pressure, a hand, a touch. We have seen a fog that will float through, which a lot of people have described seeing here. Um, we've seen lights. We've seen red lights. I'm not sure if they would be eyes. Would you guys call them eyes? No? Not really. Kara, have you seen no. eyes? No. I okay. have not seen eyes, but we have seen red lights in red here. Glowing red glowing lights. We've also we've seen the fog, as Rochelle had mentioned. Um, we've seen dancing, floating lights. Um, I hate to use the word orb, but I guess that's how we mm -hmm. would describe them. And, and you see these as naturally as we're standing here looking at one another. It's not something that just occurred on a piece of film and it could have been condensation or anything like that. You actually witness these. Yes, we actually witness these. And one thing about our group, we don't use a lot of flashlights, a lot of fancy equipment, you know, that sort of thing. So we can more often than not discount reflection. Um, I don't know, when you see it with your own eyes, it's kind of hard to say something different. Jim, most people don't like to come to cemeteries in broad daylight. You know, they just don't like it. It feels funny. Uh, but you guys come here at night. Yeah. Well, Why do you I, keep coming back? Well, you've got to research the unknown. I mean, there's something out there. You're trying to just settle it for yourself and prove something to yourself and find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a pretty big guy. Has anything ever scared you out here? Uh, nothing out here. And, uh, usually the things that scare me are the living. You know, like someone walks out from behind a tree that you're not expecting. That more gets me than seeing the, the fogs floating through or the red lights. Mm -hmm. And so, Wendy, how many times have you been to the Snyder Cemetery and what have you experienced? I've actually been here oh, several times, maybe a couple dozen times. I come during the day, I come in the evening, but um, I'm attracted to the cemetery. I feel drawn here, like there's some sort of connection. But when I started hearing the ghost stories of Snyder's, I wanted to experience something or find out if there's any truth. And um, I did experience other things like Karen Rochelle was saying, but I did have an experience here that was worth, physical. yeah, physical experience that was very worth. Okay. Tell us about it. Here. Oh, this is going to sound crazy, but this seriously happened. Um, a fog, the fog, like they were mentioning, a strange fog rolled in, and I'm trying to step out of the way to get away from this fog like it's coming to me. Well, I start back the trail, and I got my camera hanging on my wrist, and I'm trying to snap pictures, and I'm trying to move out of the way. Well, to cut a long story short, it 
latched onto my leg, a fog latched onto my leg. But it's almost like, um, you know, when a child grabs a hold of your leg, right. it was like that, but it was strong. It was very strong. I get back to my van, the fog lifts. I managed to snap pictures of this fog. And when I get in my van, then um, when I go, I go home. Well, the next morning when I get up, I'm feeling sore. So I check myself and I had bruised all the way from my from my mm. hip all the way down and it actually it's some parts wrapped around so i know from my experience of that i mean I, that was me and it was real and i was here and i can just say for mm. myself that yes i had a real true experience here wow. a physical experience like that i wasn't here when it happened but i believe her 100 yeah. percent see when she started saying that i was going to say it was rochelle Rochelle actually kicked you. While no, she I wasn't here. here. <laughs> it was her and her husband, and he wasn't near her at the time. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it, it happened. Was, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, we I, have no reason to lie about I these took things. photographs of it. I mean, I've never even seen a bruise like that. I mean, it was just so huge and so massive, and, and it was everywhere where I felt the squeeze. Mm -hmm. It was like a tight, gripping squeeze. What is it about the Snyder Cemetery, though? Because in my introduction from uh, some of the uh, research that I had done on the place, it doesn't say anything about a fire. And the legend is that uh, four members of the Snyder family perished in a fire uh, one day. But there's no mention of that. However, this is the family cemetery. It is the family cemetery, and apparently in the back here were the homes. Okay. There, was a found, there was a foundation somewhere back here. They did live here, and just like in the old olden days that they buried their dead on their property. I don't know what caused their deaths. Um, Gary Snyder might know because he is one of their descendants. He's still alive and he's part of our forum on our website. Mm -hmm. And he has shared with us a lot of information. A lot of it I can't remember because it's gone, you know, in and out one ear, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do know that I don't know how anybody died, but I do know that this place is haunted. Why? I don't know. I don't even know if it is actually the Snyder Cemetery family members that are haunting the place. Mm -hmm. It could be it could be anything. It could have been settlers, anything from other areas drawn to us when we come here. And what kind of equipment do you use to try and detect these things? Or is it basically you just try and see things and experience things, uh, things with your own eyes? We have caught things on our equipment and you can use you, you can write anything off on equipment just mm -hmm. about evps i would say which is they're probably the best thing you can get it's um they're voices of disembodied spirits or whatever disembodied energy that will actually speak back to you that's the only thing that we can't prove or disprove mm -hmm. like where did this voice come from if no one else is talking there was you a, ask a question and they'll answer you. Phenomenal voices. Yeah. Yes. There, was a, there was a movie out about a year ago uh, called White Noise, which dealt with something similar to that. Is, is that something that you might be referring to? It's similar, but they really over-exaggerated that movie. I really don't think that any harm can come to you from this. Mm -hmm. Like okay. the movie, it's kind of far-fetched. But yeah, basically that's it. Okay. This is Faces and Places. I'm your host, Mike Romai. We're at Snyder Cemetery on the property of Moraine State Park. And uh, supposedly, there are hauntings that go on here. Uh, some of the research that I have done says that what happens is, if you come between midnight and 1 a.m., that supposedly red eyes will chase you out of the place. Kara, have you, do you believe that? Have you ever been here between midnight and 1 a.m.? Yes. Um, I don't know if I should admit that, but yes. Um, did as they long as there was no illegal activity, there that's okay. You can absolutely no illegal activity whatsoever. Um, I don't know if they would chase me out, mm -hmm. but they sure did give me the inkling uh, to leave quickly. Unwanted. Unwanted. Get yes. Out of here. Yes. Gives you the creeps. It certainly and, does. And it, it wasn't only you though, because obviously this story has been reported by a number of people on websites. Absolutely, and I'm part of the group that's from Ohio. Mm -hmm. So my first visit here, I knew absolutely nothing about the cemetery. So um, when I, knowing nothing, can report floating orbs, fogs, red lights, without knowing anything, you know, that does say a little something. Mm -hmm. Now, when you all come out here, um, what do you do? Do you, do you have a seance? Do no, you, no, no, we don't do seances. Okay. We don't call on anything other than maybe ask questions. That we don't pull anything in. We don't call on people. We just mm -hmm. ask, you know, is someone here? We record it. 
We use EMF meters, which are electromagnetic field meters. We have, um, you know, voice recorders, video recorders, um, temperature gauges. Temperature ga gauges in this area are kind of hard because there's different temperatures all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's hard to read outside. Uh, what else did you say, Jim? Cameras. Cameras, video cameras. Okay. Well, digital cameras, still cameras, uh, any type of, uh, you can, if you're just getting started, you can even use something like a compass. A compass will give you the same type of readings you get off an EMF meter. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it starts moving different directions, that's, a lot of experts say that's a signal paranormal activity because it's pulling around and messing with the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have pictures of that? Uh, there are pictures of that on your website? Oh, yes. Okay. There's different pictures of the uh, videos and still pictures of different things that have happened. Mm -hmm. So people can go to spiritedghosthunting.com uh, and, and see those for themselves. Oh yeah, they're right on the home page. Rochelle does a great job making it real easy to navigate where they can just go through, click on cemeteries, click on Snyder's and see all the evidence we've caught down here. Mm -hmm. And if, unless, of course, something's going on around us right now as we speak that we're not seeing, you know, it's not a full moon night, but... Uh, you could pick it up on video yeah. or on yeah, sound, <laughs> yeah. Do you think that we're not alone as we stand here? I don't feel like anybody's here. I mean, I don't have the creeps, but then again, nothing really happens until night when mm. nightfall comes and then we're all like, there's been times we've sat here all night long and not felt scared, but heard and felt things. And there's been times that we've just like, get out. We got to go. We got to leave. Mm. Uh, are the angry spirits? You get the feeling of anger? No, it's the feeling of just leave. Oh, okay. You know, it's just get yeah. out. I don't know if they're angry. I don't know what the feeling is. But, I mean, it's not just one of us. Mm -hmm. It's all of us. And I'm not saying we're psychic or anything. It's just that, I guess it's instinct. You know, if yeah. you just you can tell when somebody's standing behind you, mm -hmm. it's that kind of feeling. And uh, what, do you, what do you want to see when you come here? What do you hope? Do you have expectations when you come here? Full body apparition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we've all, all, all wanted to see. We want somebody to come up and slap us in the face. Okay. <laughs> I'm not for the EVPs. That's my favorite. Yeah. That is okay. my all-time yeah. favorite. Okay. But you're hoping to see something rise out of the cemetery? Not necessarily rise yeah. out, but even, you know, because they lived on this land, mm -hmm. walking around, you know, coming to visit us. Mm -hmm. I would love for somebody to have a conversation with us, but I don't think that's ever even been documented. <laughs> yeah. Actual interaction would yeah. be, yeah. that would be mm -hmm. the best. And also understand that we're standing in front of the cemetery, and these walls of the cemetery have been here for uh, probably 100 years now, if not longer than that. Oh, yeah. Correct? Yeah. And But many of the things go on on the perimeter of this yeah. cemetery. It seems like right, right where you're standing, we had a, I don't know. You're just know saying that now, because I'm standing here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's right where you're standing. We actually heard a noise. We were just standing here talking, pretty much not really paying attention to the surrounding. And you heard this pop like a light bulb breaking. And then you hear like the shattering sound. And we didn't, yeah, we heard that with our own ears. I mean, it was loud. You can hear our reactions. We actually have a video of that. Well, it's actually audio of that on our website where you hear the noise and you hear our reactions and I cut it off and we leave. I mean, it was as quick as that. It was just a uh, very uncomfortable feeling. And this is right after we had commented on how bright the inside of the cemetery seemed to be getting. And then we hear this light bulb break. That was the second time that this happened. The first time it happened was several weeks before mm -hmm. and... We didn't hear it with our ears, but we did hear it when we got home. We heard it on the video recorder. Right. Well, let's take a walk back by the tree line and see what we can find out. Come on. Yeah, maybe we're crazy. Here it is, dark, not pitch black, as our ghost hunters would like it to be. But it is pretty dark here. Snyder Cemetery on Moraine State Park grounds. This is the final resting place of 14 members of the Snyder family. In fact, we're standing between the headstones of Conrad Snyder and his wife, Anne. And Conrad Snyder's headstone says he died in 1866. Anne died in 1869. Now, there are other members of the family here, uh, some children, some adults. There have been uh, plenty of generations of the, uh, of the Snyder family lived on this property before the state took it over before it became the property of Moraine State Park. In fact, Conrad Snyder owned about 6,000 acres. He first came to the United States in the early 1800s uh, when he came from Switzerland. And uh, many of his children had big families, six and eight uh, people in the families. Uh, and it wasn't uncommon for people in that day to die at a young age. 
to live past 40 was probably pretty remarkable. And it also was not uncommon for children to die at a very young age, just because of the medical technology. Uh, they didn't have the benefit of the advances that we do today. Uh, Rochelle, as we stand between these headstones, um, I know you felt a little odd about being in here, and this is why we're kind of standing the way we are, because even though you like to come out and look for ghosts, you don't want to stand on the graves. No, we have, but we try not to. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you can't help it just to get through. Um, it just seems disrespectful. And as I was saying, um, we don't hunt cemeteries very often. You'll find a lot on our site. We usually go during the day a lot of times, mm -hmm. but it's more out of respect for the people that are buried here. We just are drawn to cemeteries and not just for the paranormal aspect. We enjoy just reading the stones, learning the history, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yes. And, but and we, this, we have had paranormal activity happen, and this place has been known for it. Supposedly, a green glow comes off of the headstones from time to time. And that's something that you're going to have to keep an eye on, because as we stand here and talk, there may be things going on around us or in the background that we're not paying attention to. I don't know. Do you, do you think that the, the lights uh, and the electronic equipment uh, have any effect on whatever paranormal activity would be going on around here? No. No, no not at all. They're used well, to that? There is a, a saying in the paranormal field, where that uh, paranormal energy will draw energy from your electronics, from your batteries and things like that in order for it to give a sign that it's there when you're asking. It's not unusual have a fully charged battery to be dead in five minutes on your cameras. So that's a good point, Jim. And, and uh, when, you, when you folks are out here uh, looking for something to happen and you say, when you ask them, uh, what are you trying to communicate with and, and what do you ask them whenever you pose a question to them or you're trying to get them to make themselves appear before you or known to you well like we don't we don't draw people in like we don't have seances we don't use Ouija boards we're against all that sort of thing but we do ask questions like we would talk to one another like if I, I'll say what's your name we give a limited amount of time for them to respond ask another question what year is it you know what's your date of birth are you married things of that nature and give a time for response we don't always hear things with our ears, but sometimes we do. Mm -hmm. But you'll go home, listen to them on you know, your computer, whatever, and you'll hear a faint voice, like an electronic voice, come through. And mm -hmm. it's not one of us. We'll know. Okay. You know, we're quiet throughout this. Okay. Now, this isn't going to be a poltergeist experience, Wendy, but I'm going to ask you to come into the light here <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and uh, now, earlier you were talking about the something latching on to your leg, the fog or the mist latching on to your leg. Uh, any other experiences? Do you have? Do you uh, experience anything as we stand here? No, actually, I feel peace here. I feel comfortable here right now. Um, I don't feel anything bad. I don't feel. I don't feel like there's even anything around right mm -hmm. now. So, I feel pretty comfy right now. Now, would you feel that way if the the other four of us weren't here? Cause it'd be it kind of spooky to me. It depends. Well, I've actually been here. I've actually been in here alone by myself in the dark. And um, sometimes it's uncomfortable and I have to leave. And other times I'm very comfortable at peace. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask a question that, uh, that people at home are, are, are just, it's on the tip of their tongues here. Why? Why would you be here by yourself? It's what I do. <laughs> it's what I like to do. It gets me out of the house. <laughs> no, um... I don't know, I guess I'm after what everybody else is after, the truth, an experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something I like to do. Yeah. It started out as a hobby, and it became more serious with me. It's still a hobby, but it's fun. It's a fun hobby. Okay. And these are the Spirited Ghost Hunters, by the way, uh, and you can check out their website at spiritedghosthunters.com. Spirited Ghost Hunting. Spirited Ghost Hunting. Spiritedghosthunting.com Spirited okay. or mysgh.com. That's mysgh.com. Yeah, that's a little more complicated for me to try and remember. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? That's supposed to be easier. That, that went right past me, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Kara, you have experiences. Uh, some here at the cemetery and some other places. Yes, I've had some here um not exactly where we stand actually more beyond uh on the outside walls um not so much here with the stones mm -hmm. but in several other places besides snyder cemetery i've mm -hmm. had 
Numerous experiences, yes. And you're from Ohio. Yes. Uh, and how did you hook up with this group here, and uh, what were some of the experiences that you've shared with them from what happened to you in Ohio? Um, I actually met Rochelle on a different website, and we became fast friends. We're pretty much exactly alike, um, which is scary to the rest of everyone. <laughs> um, but we, uh, we started talking online, and then uh, she decided she was going to start her own group, um, so together we were able to form Spirited Ghost Hunting. She, of course, is the founder and I of the Ohio side. Mm -hmm. um, my experiences that I've shared with all of my pals here, um, I lived in a place in, in Warren where several things went on, um, blowing in my ears, things floating, things flying off of uh, entertainment stands, um, dark figures, you know, things along those lines. And I guess that's what probably got me started. Yeah, so the blowing in your ears couldn't be attributed to your husband. <laughs> <laughs> it could have, um, but he was on the other side. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, actually. Well, that's um, not a good sign either because yeah, he was blown yeah. in that. He's that side. I'm getting blown on the ear on this side. Um, yeah, actually, it was it was strong enough to move my hair um, mm -hmm. at the time. Same time, he jumped out of the bed claiming to have seen um, a figure mm -hmm. standing over me. Yeah. Um, we had knocks on our doors, um, uh, floating. We had a little baby doll come off of our entertainment stand, not just fall off, but actually lift, move, and fall. Mm -hmm. um, got a little creepy. Yeah. Um, so that's, of course, when I decided to start investigating a little bit more shortly after I met Rochelle. So were the ghosts any different in Ohio than they are in Pennsylvania? Maybe. They mm -hmm. might be. You know, I, I <laughs> had an experience in a, a cemetery in Ohio, um, took a photograph, didn't see anything at the time, but when the photograph, it was with a digital camera, when I looked at the screen, there were actually three bodies um, in that picture, uh, a man next to him was a lady, the lady's holding a, a small baby. Mm -hmm. Um, upon research of that, we did find out that, that, that baby, his name was Arlie Barber, um, was buried in that cemetery and we were able to find out the parents' names, um, Jenny and, yeah, I can't remember the fellas now, but we, we did do some research on that. Okay. Cause I was going to say being from Ohio, it could be Cleveland Brown fans that kind of drop dead after every Sunday game. Yeah, it, it, it's quite possible yeah. lately. It's quite possible <laughs> of that. <laughs> Ex expectations are so high, and then they just drop over after after the games on Sunday. Happens year after year, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> it, does. it does. So can we see any, I mean, do you guys feel anything? Do you see anything? Do you sense anything? Do you have anything coming up on your meters there? No, and I'm not holding my meter. He okay. has one. Jim, pull your meter out there. Let's see what you got. This is what's called a K2 meter. It detects magnetic field, which supposedly, paranormal, if there's paranormal activity, it will detect it. And if there's paranormal activity around, what happens is it'll start off green here, and as it comes close, it'll go all the way over to the side and light up red. So you ruined it for me. I was going to say, I see a green glow there. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Don't want to give you any false hopes on that. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, if there was a paranormal activity going around us right now, this would pick it up, and this would light up, and the farther it went, to, the closer it is. Okay. So that's... Mm -hmm. More part of th part of the equipment we use to you know try and validate what we're feeling and seeing. So and it doesn't pick up on normal body heat or uh, the cameras that y that you may have any kind of equipment that you're using. Uh, this particular model does not because you can see I can hold it up towards the microphone and it makes no difference or hold it towards a person it won't make any difference. Mm -hmm. I mean like I said this one isn't an electronic meter like the the older ones is this is a new one it's just strictly magnetic okay. so it won't be interfered with by the different electronic equipment we use. Okay. Now, when you come out on hauntings, do you look for, I mean, do you think that the, whatever spirits are out there, that they know we're here, uh, so they're not going to make themselves uh, known to us? Sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that certain ones may have more intelligence than others, not that they were smarter in life, mm -hmm. but because they may be further evolved or know more than one that maybe have just has just pan passed away. I, I really don't know. Those are answers that we may never know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully someday we will. But... I do believe that spirits are drawn to people that may be looking for them. You know, so being here, we don't know if we're getting the hauntings of the people buried in Snyder Cemetery or people drawn to us from the grounds or mm -hmm. other families or just people who have passed away, you know, in this park alone. Okay. Red eyes from the uh, perimeter or along the tree lines. Um, green glow comes from the cemetery here from the headstones and uh, white flashes 
white flashes. Okay. We've never experienced red eyes. We have experienced red lights. They have. We've seen white lights floating. I can't say that they were orbs because we're not sure about orbs, but mm -hmm. we did witness these with our eyes. It wasn't just on camera. Um, we've never really seen these stones glow green or anything. Actually, we've never really witnessed too much within the walls of the cemetery. It's usually on the perimeters of the cemetery. Now, we did see on one, one video I have on Conrad's stone, a light did come off of it, but we really have no explanation for that. I can't say that that was paranormal or if it was a glare or, you know, a bug mm -hmm. or what is it. But yeah. it, that was an odd situation where it wasn't something that normally occurs on our video cameras. And do you ever think that a hundred years from now that uh, there's going to be a group just like yours, maybe walking around the cemetery, wherever we're buried, doing the same thing? I hope. I should I hope, hope so. so. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? I hope so. And I'm going to say hi. Uh -huh. I'm going to say boo. Yeah. <laughs> boo. That was the best yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The Snyder Cemetery at Moraine State Park with the spirited ghost hunting. Right? Got it right that Spirit time. Spiritedghosthunting.com. And you can find, you can see, if you haven't seen anything yet uh, surrounding us here at the cemetery, you can go to their website and, uh, and look at some of the pictures that they have there, some of the stories that they have there. Uh, some of the pictures were taken in, in daylight. Oh, yeah. We had Mennonite Cemetery, mm -hmm. which is right off of 19. We went there to visit during the day. We weren't really even there for a ghost hunt. We just wanted to videotape some of the old stones and stuff. And... Actually, we didn't even know we picked anything up. Somebody that was viewing our, our video footage said, hey, did you see this? And we zoomed in on it, and sure enough, there was something floating black, white. I don't know what it was, but it was moving in and out of a mm -hmm. stone and around it, yeah. Okay. And so also, um, because your group is, is so diverse, uh, you have people from Elwood City, from uh, West Newton, Middlesex. West Middlesex, from Ohio. You talked about Texas. Oh, yeah, we have several yeah. states. Yeah, Kentucky, Louisiana, mm -hmm. Michigan, North Carolina. Florida. Florida. Uh, well, I said Texas, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, so yeah. if there are people that, wanna, that want to share stories with you, they can get onto your website and do that. Oh, yeah, certainly. We accept anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're very open to beliefs, too. I mean, any religion, mm -hmm. we have, you know, anything. Anybody that wants to come onto our site, as long as they're nice <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're not coming there to, like, slam on us, yeah, they're welcome. Okay. A lot of people will slam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think they're just, they just don't understand, you know. And there are a lot of cynics. Yeah, there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of cynics, and mm -hmm. I have family members that are. Mm -hmm. They'll tease me about this, but... Mm -hmm. We don't do this for them. We do it for us, and mm. we're not out here to prove anything. And you don't have to see to believe? No, no I don't. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have to see to believe. I have seen, okay. but you do kind of forget about the things you've seen, and you question yourself. But no, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, there, I, I, if there's a God, then there's something else out there, and I believe in God. <laughs> <laughs> what do you believe? That's the question. Do you believe that hauntings actually go on here at Snyder Cemetery? Or do you believe that it's just a quiet cemetery that people like us invade every Halloween season and try and conjure up something? Like we said, it's subjective. What do you believe? I believe we're just about finished here at Snyder Cemetery. Glad you joined us. I'm Mike Roma, your host of Faces and Places. Next time for Faces and Places as we head to Moraine State Park for the first annual Boy Scout Camporee. Scouts from all over the area enjoying fun, friendship, and a lot of activities. You won't believe what we see and what we have a good time doing. Faces and Places next time.